Hello? Yes. Do you hear me? I do hear you. Go ahead. Finally, I've been waiting so long for this moment, but okay. It's all right. Uh, well, I have a, I have some questions. All right. Are you on the stand first? Uh, yes. All right. Actually, yes. <clears throat> um, but I'm struggling. Uh, I just want to know the truth. I have uh, some questions. All right. So there is in the Quran there is a uh, the, the science, and uh, they they tell about the iron mm. that they sent it from above. Mm. So I don't know if you can explain me this, but I I cannot find it anywhere on the internet. You only see about Muslims who are saying uh, yes uh, in the Quran it's uh, like yeah, from I, above. Yeah, I, I, I know yeah. that. I, I can find it for you. No problem. Let me give me a second. And we will show you how this is uh, this is nothing but a big fat lie. Yes. Right. Give me a second, please. I will find you the reference. So you think this is truthful, or you, what do you think? Well, some things I think are truthful, but they they say they never change the Quran. So mm. I don't know about that. This is the Quran. So, uh, what what they say to you about the Quran, about the miracle of the Aaron? It's coming from above, right? Yes, yes. Right. And that now in the twentieth century they uh, they found that it's true. And how could an Arab man from the fourteenth century all knew about this? No, actually, the Quran. Uh, if we go to the Quran and speak about Al Hadid. Yes. And it says the following. Chapter 57, verse number 25. It says, We send our messengers with the clear proofs, and we send down with them a book and the balance that the humanity may uphold justice. And we send down iron, which is violent force. So, what the Quran is saying, we send with our messengers books, but did Allah really send a physical book? No. Anything anything is given to us supposedly is sent down from Allah Including rain including angels including books even the messengers themselves and then here It says and we send down the Aaron so they can kill people with it because it says about violent force If we go and read the interpretation for this verse it says that this is a tool Allah he sent for mighty war So human beings they will kill each other. All right. Secondly, yes. secondly Aaron was not sent down from the space in earth the earth magma is full of Aaron what the science speak of that the crust of the earth have a lot of Aaron which is coming from the space not the earth has zero iron otherwise the, the magma itself is coming from the space so this is not true secondly the Quran says that Allah he created Adam in this in the sixth day so yes. the, the science they are talking about about millions of years where some iron came from the space as meteor and fell down in the earth but the Quran says in the sixth day Allah created Adam and as you know Adam have a blood and our blood full of iron actually if we don't if we have deficiency in iron we will die immediately okay All right so it's a lie when they say that this is about the iron sent down secondly like I saw some of them they say uh, the number of the iron and they say uh, this chapter here is a chapter of al-hadid which is a chapter 57 and this is the yeah, it's again. in the corner of his uh, the half of yeah. it. There's iron. Yeah, but hold on. First of yeah. all, first of all, this is not uh, the half. Secondly, in chapter fifty, uh, chapter fifty-seven, uh, is not the true number of the Quran uh, chapter because, as you remember, this is as Uthman he did. So, if we go and see, if we look for the book of the Quran according to Revelation, we will find the following. Let me show it to you, Quran. According to Revelation, and then in this, in, in here we will find <clears throat> if we go and we look for Al Hadid.
Do you see? Uh, do you see my screen? No, I'm calling with my phone, but you can read it to me. It's All no right. problem. This is the Quran according to the revelation. What What does that mean? You will notice here in the Quran that what is verse, what is chapter number one, is Al Alaq. But today in the Quran today is a chapter number ninety six. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now if we go and search for fifty seven, chapter number fifty seven, we will find the following. Second, all right, chapter 57 is the chapter of Luqman. Do you see it? Oh, you yeah, see, you can. So, the real number of the chapter, which is number 57, is Luqman. So, if the Quran today is better than the Quran which Allah He sent. As order, that's mean the Quran, the one who made the Quran today, Uthman, is Allah, and Allah is not a good God, because our Uthman he come to number fifty-seven. So the one who made it fifty-seven is Uthman, not Allah. Are you getting my point? Yeah, I'm getting it. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a false claim they come with. They are desperate. Now number fifty-seven, the the uh, Al Hadid, is supposedly number ninety-four. Okay. Which means the real number is 94, not 57. So when they say this is a miracle, how it is 57? Well, this is mean the one who made the miracle is Uthman, not Allah. Yeah, it's uh, very <laughs> you know I mean? stupid. They so, just make everything. Yeah, so it so, sounds uh, very good so, and everything is on its place. Yeah, so Allah is the one who said it is, he, he gave it to Muhammad as number 94, which means at the end of the Quran, almost at the end. So look at the difference. In the Quran today is 57. In the Quran of Muhammad is 94. That's mean the Quran of Muhammad is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's and mean, there is also something mean, about in the, uh, in the best scenario. May, that's mean yeah. Uthman is the prophet, not Muhammad, because how Uthman he knew. <laughs> yeah. What else? Give me one. Uh, give me uh, more if you want. Uh, there's something about we made w water from all living living beings, like there's all water inside of them. So uh, I don't know exactly what yeah. they say, but yeah. this is also uh, a miracle. So it's a kind yeah. of science but thing. No, this is this is not only a, a stupid miracle because everybody knows everything around us live by water. I mean, this is a this is not a knowledge. However, this is a bad miracle for the Muslims. Why? Because the Quran says. When, when the Quran says we made it from uh, the water every living thing, he just contradicts himself because the Quran says that angels are made of light. Correct? Yes, but angels are not, not living here, right? What about the genie? And the Quran yeah, says... I, I don't see them, man, so I don't know. No, the Quran... But maybe... No, no. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not about all living things like we can see. No, 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 hold on. No. It says chapter number 21. This is the first Just one. everything. Just do the genes, believer, genies and angels. No, do the believer see that the heavens and the earth were one mess and we tore them apart and we made from water every living thing. Every living thing. And by the way, genie, you can see them because Muhammad, he said, the snake is a genie. A black a black dog is a genie, is a shaitan. So who said we don't see them? They are. We can see them, according to Muhammad. Muhammad, he ordered his example to kill the black dogs. Why? Because he believed a black is an evil color, and he be, he's racist. So he believed that the black dog is the devil. They ask him why we should kill the black dog. He says, because he is the devil. So when the Quran says we made every living thing from water, that is a stupid thing. Say, same time, well, isn't it the Quran state that the earth and this and the sky are living thing too. Aren't they living things and we see them? Yes. Okay. So how are they made from water? Yeah, but that's different sky in the No, it's not different. Muhammad uh, Muhammad the rocks he said is they said to him Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> <laughs> rocks, you know. Yeah. Muhammad he says, Hada Hajar on you wa nuhibbu. So and uh, uh, even Muhammad, he says, the black stone is going to come in the judgment day with two eyes and a tongue and going to speak. And you said you speak Arabic, right? You are an Arab girl. 
No, no, no. I uh, I'm Moroccan, but I don't speak Arabic. Oh, I, I'm born in the Netherlands, so oh. I, I'm um, I'm talking Berbers, if you know that. All right, I don't speak Berber. I am an Arab. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. No problem. But anyway, this is here. Uh, first of all, this is a, 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 a any any kid can say everything around us. Every living thing is made from water. This is not science, you know. Generally speaking, but when we say when we make it science. That is a stupid statement because the Quran says that Allah He created the shaitan from fire and He created the angels from light. However, even angels they can transform into men. Isn't the Muslim the sage Jibreel he came to Muhammad as a man? Yes. Okay, so was Jibreel made from water or from light? Not from light then. Hmm. How the light became a man, water? But what what I also don't understand why you make a religion and if you know that one of thousand people will enter pi paradise what's mm. what's the point of making that kind of religion? No, this is not really, are, this is not an issue for me because it's uh, you know about people deserve people don't deserve but this is not the issue. Uh, uh, but here you have a point based on Islam it you know it it it, it exposes Islam and I will show you why. But before we go to answer you about that one, do you see here it says do the disbelievers not see? Yes, don't I know you, that. Don't one. you think this is stupid? Yeah, it's because yeah, it's like they because they who saw argue. who saw this? None of us. How you say to us? Don't they see? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like your father and your mother. They say to you, "Don't you see our wedding party?" <laughs> but you were not there. Like at least today we have videotape maybe, but how you can witness for something you never you, you were not there. So when he speak about don't the spirit ever see how the earth and the heaven they used to be one together and we separate them, but they did not see that. Nobody saw that. Secondly, no. the Quran here is teaching something false that the earth and the heaven they are they used to be one and Allah separated them, but this is not true. We are inside the space. We are not outside. We are not even a small dust inside the space. And we are not separated. We are swimming in the space. The earth is simply like a spaceship provided with oxygen and its own needs to, to, uh, to function. As simple as that. Small, tiny spaceship, not even a size of a dust. So we are not separated apart. What the Quran is saying, that the earth and the heaven, they are now two objects. We are not. We are tiny. We're not even a dust. What else they told you about science? Give me something else. Uh, well, about the pain reflectors in your in your skin, because when you go to hell, then your skin will be burnt off and you'll get new ones again. And mm. they find out in science that it's true. I don't know the, exactly what they do. You know that one? Mm, okay. Well, you see here. I mean, isn't it everybody knows that when you put somebody in the fire, you do barbecue, they will get different color? <laughs> yeah, but they, they they were thinking that it's from the brains or something like that. I don't know. Uh, what the brain? This is from the fire. What the brain? This is from the fire. You know, you what, the first thing we're born. Yeah, I mean, the pain. When you, I don't know, something uh, like that. About I, the, pain I, the, skin, I, the pain in the skin, the pain in the skin, right? The pain in the skin. Yes. Yeah. But you see, the pain in the skin doesn't mean that the rest of the body don't have pain. But the skin is the first thing to face whatever foreign object is. Actually, the skin have less... No, no, sorry. It's like this. Uh, when the skin is totally burned off, you don't feel anything anymore. So that's why you get a new skin and you get the pain uh, uh, who, again. Who said, that's... If, who said if the skin burned off, you don't feel anything no more? Who said that? Yeah, that, that's what they say. It's no, uh, this uh, science thing about this that. This is not a true because we have nerve, we have nerves, we have in, in every place in our. Do do you do you feel pain in your stomach? No, because no, but no. when your skin is totally just ruined. Okay, if your skin, you don't feel anything anymore, right? No, you feel what, 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 because it's still, actually you will be burning more. You will be feeling more because now the pain. You see, your skin is your first defense system. If that yes. is gone, if that is gone. Like if you if you now peel out your skin, then yes. the air will be har harmful for you. Just the air will hurt you. So it's the opposite actually. There is the skin have have sensation, yes, but the under skin is even more sensitive. This is why if you have a cut, you will be hurt more.
why because now your skin is not protecting you so if you are burned in the skin does not mean you are not going to fail because it's still the burn will go down not only will stay in the skin have oh, you ever heard of somebody have you ever heard of a, a chicken you barbecue the chicken all the skin is burned no it's burning them it's, the whole skin the whole chicken is cooked okay <laughs> not only the skin so you know this is that just this is a madness and here by the way what kind of a pro what kind of god do you want to do that like you know i want to change your skin and i will barbecue again what about yeah those what, hell things are just horrifying it just scares me about what hell about, and what about great punishments okay. oh it's so scary to just hear about that you know you are a lady but i uh, i don't want to be rude with you do you know that the quran says that uh, a person who disobey allah allah will insert a chain in his anus Yes, I know. I know. I know. I heard about that. Yes, mm. but that's just horrifying. So, mm. yeah, I don't know what to say about what, that. What kind but... of what kind of God he want to do? Sexual punishment. This is sexual torture. Why he want to insert? Yeah, something with the body parts you've been using. They will be punished. Yeah, but why the anus? Oh, the anus. I didn't hear about that. I, it was that's uh, kind of new for me. Yeah. So <laughs> he, you know, he said that you have, you know, he. Uh, uh, let me get you the the, the uh, verse and this uh, uh, this chain is very huge to the point each ring of it as long as you spoke about the Aaron each ring of it is equal uh, to the whole Aaron in the world you know All right. And by the way, here we have another miracle to talk about. Uh, my page is frozen. Let us see now. I will refresh my page. Give me a second. Okay. All right. Finally. I will show it to you in English as long as you don't speak Arabic. Um, we will go to Ibn Kathir. And then we go here. All right. I want you to look with me in the screen, please. I will put it for you on the screen. And we will read together. This is Ibn Kathir. Let us zoom in. Allah in the judgment day he will give you your book some people will be given their book in the right hand and some people will be given to them in the left hand okay what after, okay. What after that then he says then fasten him can you see the screen no I can't. I'm calling with my phone but it's oh, okay. okay I can hear right. you so I'll then, just, uh, then just fast and you can watch it later after we finish then yes. fasten him on chain wherefore the length is 70 cubits Kabul Ahbar said every ring of it will be equal to the entire amount of the Aaron found in this world. Continue. Then, he says, yes. Then fasten him. It will be entered into his buttocks and pulled out of his mouth. What do you think about this? Each yeah, ring, think, each yeah. ring of this ring have more Aaron than the whole world. How big is the anus of a human being? How they can get in? And what kind of God he is doing this? Put in chain in the anus of a human being. This is sexual punishment. This is sexual torture. What is that? Why? Why? And why the anus? I mean, what is that? 
Yeah, those punishments are horrifying. I tell this is you. not a horrifying. This is a joke because this is a first impossible because it says that every ring of this chain have more iron than the whole world. So every every ring of the chain is like maybe billions and trillions of tons of iron. How do you can get that inside an ass of a person? <laughs> it's stupid. This is not a horrifying. I don't know. It's not that they're in hells big like in heaven. What big in heaven? Do you know how much iron we have in this earth? I don't know. Okay, so this is 70 cubit long, but each ring of it have more iron than all the iron in the earth. So how big it is? And all of this will go inside the anus of a human being. That is impossible. That's stupid. And there he says, and this, this, uh, 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 after he insert it, he will take it off from his nose, and then he says, "If a drop of lead like this, they are describing for you this uh, uh, chain, and he yeah. pointed to the sickle bone, were sent from the heaven to the earth, and in its distance is a five hundred years travel. Look how big it is. <laughs> this is the this is one ring. This is not the whole thing. It, yeah, it cannot it enter a, then. Okay, so how you?" The, the human being is a small tiny creature and then you want to insert all this arrow in his anus yeah that's uh, give me I something else the first the, the, until now the muslim they did not succeed to give us anything useful until now we have nothing but fiction and stupidity and uh what about uh there's something in the quran that says sperm is coming from out um from out the belly and uh I've seen that um, Muslim people will tell them it is from um, a vein mm. and the vein is located near the ribs and mm. if that vein does not work, there will be no sperm. sperm like th that's, their, that's sperm, their answer about so that. Sperm, they come from the vein. I never heard of a vein can give a sperm. Yeah, right. yeah, but that's really what uh, they say about it because someone had a question. Uh, he, he said, well, I, I saw in the Quran that something about... Um, Mm. Sperm is made in uh, uh, the chest or something like that, near the ribs, mm. you know. Mm. And she tells them, "Well, is that true?" And then someone, uh, some from an Islamic website, told them, "From um, there is a vein, and mm. if that vein uh, does doesn't work anymore, there will be not no sperm. It's That's it because of that vein." But this is okay. And and, and but, that one is located near the ribs, mm, so that's mm, their answer. Ah. Yeah, but the Quran is saying it's a gushing fluid coming from the ribs, not a vein. Next, what about I say if my, my brain in this case, based on the no, they're not they're not talking about the vein, but that's what that's their answer. No, the, the to protect it, you know. No, my uh, my friend, the the verse saying that it's a gushing fluid coming from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman, not that yeah. there is a vein and the vein get the order. The, the sperm first of all women didn't have a sperm do women have a sperm no okay so what vein this is about yeah, from the from the man from the man no from this the verse talking about the man and the women read this is Ibni Kathir I will give you the link to, so you can read it later this is Ibn Kathir saying clearly that this is about a sexual fluid coming from the man and the women the sexual fluid of the man is coming from the backbone he created you from water gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid. And by the way, this is what he meant when he says we created everything from water. We start with the sperm. Uh, the sexual fluid that's come from breast forth. It is not a vein. It's not a nerve. It's a sexual fluid coming from where? From the men and the women. Okay. And the child will not produce except by both of them. Continue. Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Meaning the backbone of the man and the rest of the women, but vain. Women don't have a sperm. Oh, it's lying about that. I, was, I, I really saw that. They are trying to cover a big fat error in the Quran. What do you expect? Women have no sperm. And men's sperm does not come from the backbone. So it's come, as, it's a gushing fluid, sexual fluid, and the baby will not be born without them. But this is not true because women. Uh, sexual fluid have nothing to do with the baby born or not uh, uh, you can make a woman you know have a child by taking a sperm of a man without sex and taking yeah, the egg true. even they can do it in the laboratory 
what sexual fluid so uh, uh, Muhammad he described he think supposedly he claimed Allah told him that the man have a sexual fluid coming from the backbone and the women have sexual fluid coming from her ribs and why Muhammad he come with that because there is uh, you know like uh, if, uh, if somebody have too much sex he feel like his back is uh, is hurting so Muhammad he come to the conclusion it must be the backbone <clears throat> <laughs> serious yeah like why other, otherwise why he feel some pain there you know and obviously it must be that the sperm is coming from there so like when he cannot have sex no more okay that's mean okay and then he have a pain in that area so obviously the, the sperm is coming from there anything else she until now all of this is stupid do you really believe in this yeah if I really believe this, I wouldn't go. So I just right. want to make sure that you so know, did you decide to leave Islam talk them or with you, someone about this? Did you decide to leave Islam or not yet? I'm having doubts about it, you know. But why you don't want to leave Islam? I mean, isn't it obvious this is stupid? I, I'm I'm doing nothing about it, you know. Why it's you, not that I'm doing something about no, it. It's why, not you that don't, I'm, why you don't leave Islam? I mean, you just agreed that this is stupid. So why you don't say I'm out? Yeah, because I see so many people are still practicing and I say sometimes what? well what if it's true and you know a lot of people uh, you say see uh, because nobody nobody being truthful and most of those people do not know the second you show them they will not believe in this is existence most of Muslims they have no idea what is in there yeah my mother also told me about those infant uh, killing that the Prophet uh, that's false said. there's nowhere in the Quran it says don't kill infant al mawuda have nothing to do with the infant because this is it's about al mawuda al mawuda which the one which is buried this is the this is the dead body in the judgment day allah will ask supposedly the dead buried for what reason you killed for what a crime that's all have nothing to do with burying infant because if the arab were burying infant then we would not have women <laughs> if we bury yeah, our daughters cool. not only that right. muhammad himself he used to work for khadija correct Yes. So women before Islam, they used to be the boss. It is the it is the Arab who bury their infant today, because they put you inside the box, they cover you, and they say you are our property. Yeah, you're, that is true. You're, they you're, say that uh, Muslim women have a lot of rights, but I don't see those what rights. rights. She have the right to be beaten. She's like a cow. You know, you you bring a cow, you feed the cow. Why? Because you want to get the milk. So the Muslims, he feed you to milk you, not because he uh, he care for you. That is true. Yeah, and isn't it the Quran says beat the women? Yeah, but not uh, no, not really beating, just okay, uh, a slap or something no, like that. No, right? it's really beating. Here we go. Let me show you the reference. This is a, this is a, they lie to you, my friend. Uh, the the reason for this story: a man he did beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothes. Muhammad, he took the side of the man against the women. Let me show you the story. Here we go. It's about a guy. His name is Rifa. He divorced his wife. Muhammad, he uh, he forced the Muslim. If a man he divorced his wife three times, she have to marry a new man so she can get back to her husband. This woman, obviously, she marry a new husband just to get rid back to the first husband because Quran have a stupid rule. So now, yeah, why is that? Why is that? If you divorce your man, you have to marry someone else so you can b go because, back to him, right? This, this is disgusting because uh, if the woman now is the one who will suffer and sleep with the new <laughs> man, all right? But this is not her fault. She is not the one who divorced. <laughs> yeah, so he is punishing the women to sleep with a new man so she can go back to her husband. And here you see that the man he did beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothes. Did Muhammad take the side of the man or the women? He took the side of the man. And this is the hate. I will post it in the text for everybody can save it and see it. So the Prophet of Allah, he did not even ask the man why you beat her hard. Muhammad, he says, don't beat them until you break their bones. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, but this is this is mean, okay, it's okay to beat them until, until not to beat their bones. And as you see here, her skin became greener than her clothes. Secondly, let us say somebody that beat you so light by spitting at you. How look look how light it is. Spit. Spit. Do you accept such an insult? 
no. Okay, so what light you mean? The second you say beat them, that's mean you are not equal and you are not even equal to animals. In America, if you beat a, if you beat a dog, you go to jail. If you beat a dog, you go to yeah. jail. You call the police, they will come and they will arrest you. And you will stay at least for six months in jail for beating a dog. So what does it mean, beat them light, lightly? They lie. There's nowhere in the Quran says lightly. Secondly, even if it is lightly, who gave you permission to beat a human being? She is an adult, even if she's a child. She is your wife. Why you want to beat her? Because the Quran says why? Because he wants to force you to obey him, correct? Sure. Okay, so the beating cannot be lightly because the point of this beating is to make her obedience. And what about uh, Saudi Arabia when you don't want to be a Muslim there anymore? They kill you. Are they, they kill you. are they going to kill you? Like seriously? Yeah. Oh yeah, any any Islamic countries actually the the punishment for apostasy is death. But do, do you have to get witnesses or something like that, or just if they hear that you? Well, yeah, no. If you don't pray no more, it depend depend in the country. Like if you say it in public, they can be executed right away. And if you don't go to pray, the police in Saudi Arabia, they will send the police to question, why you don't go to the mosque no more? So if you don't have an excuse, like I'm sick, etc., they will question you. And if they have a proof that you are left Islam, they will kill you. And if you leave Islam, by the way, they give you three days to repent. If you repent within three days, they will not execute you right away, immediately. They will put you in a room, jail you, and they will give you three days to repent. If you don't repent in three days, they will kill you right away. Yeah. Um, what, what do, do why do they say what well, in Islam uh, you have a freedom for religion? What about that? that? I don't that's understand not, that. That's not, not true. Have... That's not true. The verse they are oh. talking about, the verse they are talking about in the Quran, first of all, Muhammad was speaking about saying to the Jews, you cannot force your children not to accept Islam, not the opposite. Otherwise, Muhammad he says, the one who changes religion, kill him. Yeah, but this sounds stupid. There's freedom in religion, but if you're not a Muslim, no, you're going no to hell. No, there's no freedom. <laughs> they, they are lying. There's no freedom. That's not true. You know, Muhammad. Why is it in the Quran? There. Are, it's not in the Quran. Uh, it's not in the Quran. The Quran says that la ikraha fid din, la ikraha fid din. This is was about the children of the Jews. They were teaching their children not to not to accept Muhammad, not to believe in Muhammad. So Muhammad was saying to them. There is no, uh, you cannot force them not to convert. So it was in the opposite direction, not for Muslims. So like which saying, like let us say I have a son and I say to him, don't accept Islam. Muhammad is saying, you cannot force him not to accept Islam. Not the opposite. Oh. You get the point? You get the point? Yes, I get it. Yeah. So the Muslim, they take it because they, uh, they, uh, they knew that you do not know much. So we can fool you. So, because read with me carefully. This is the verse the Muslims they keep quoting for us. This is chapter two, verse number two five six. But the Quran says, "Fight those who don't believe in Allah." And the last day. But that's for now. Or was for it now, the, yes, for the time now. Of the chapter of Atoba is the last chapter, supposedly one of the last chapters. Some they say even it's the last one ever was given to Muhammad. So the chapter of Atoba, this is when Muhammad he became victorious. He killed all the Jews. He uh, he took over the Arabian Peninsula. He decided to uh, uh, and he 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 kicked out of the Christians too. He decided to fight the Christians and kill them all. Otherwise, they had to convert. So this is the Atoba. Here, this one is not about you cannot force somebody into religion because Muhammad, all his religion about forcing people into religion. Isn't it Muhammad, he said, I've been ordered to fight all mankind until they say there's no God but Allah and there's no prophet but me. So how, how he says, I've been ordered to fight and command to kill them all. Hmm? And then he says, there's no, uh, no conclusion religion. That can't be true. Here we go. All those verses. Look, all those says Muhammad says, I've been ordered, I've been commanded to kill all mankind except for sure the Muslims. Except they say there's no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. And if they say that and they pay the zakat and they do the, pay the money for me, then their blood and their property is secure from me. 
So how there is no nobody can force anyone into a religion and Muhammad saying I've been ordered to kill all mankind unless they do this and this Okay, and uh, there is also a hadith about uh, Muhammad was uh, Was uh, with a cat and he does not want to disturb the cat. So he cut off his uh, clothing mm, That's nice. Okay, so Muhammad is very nice with the cat. What about killing dogs? Yeah, this it doesn't make sense. So, so they only they only tell good things about him because that's that's only yeah that's hmm. you can only hear good things. I, I never knew that he was just killing, and that's, of course they will never tell us. Hmm. You only hear the good things. Allah Messenger said, "Kill the following: dogs, uh, you know, and all those animals. All of them they are because they are share one thing. They are like dogs and black animals." You have to kill them. Why? Yeah, because they say they're um, not pure, not. Uh, okay, but he was nice with the with the cat. Why he's nice with the cat? But he want to kill. Yeah, the because the cat cleans himself, and uh, Allah loves the one who cleans himself, like something like that. I but guess. First of all, because all, all animals they clean themselves. Actually, cat's mouth is more dirty than the dog. You can go right now and search. You will find that the bite of a cat can be a lot more dangerous than a bite of a dog. Because cat have more contagious viruses inside her mouth from dogs, and uh, but uh, what about the the? Yeah, sorry, I don't know, I don't speak English very well. But the spit, the how do you say that? The spit of the dog, the water in his mouth. That's also uh, you have to wash your clothing like seven times seven or something time like that. I don't remember that. Yeah, but uh, because he, he Muhammad obviously he hates dogs. And I, I believe <clears throat> he hates dogs for a reason. Dogs, they can sense evil. They can sense bad energy. Yeah. So obviously, Muhammad, when he sees dogs, dogs go crazy because they sense the evil of him. So he hated them. Cats, they yeah. don't. Cats, they don't care. You know? <clears throat> dogs are different. A dog, he can sense a human being. from If, if, you, if you own a dog, I saw a study, scientific study, that a person who is uh, the owner of the dog, he is 500 meters away in the bus station. He just came in home. The dog, he started getting excited because he feel it. Imagine. You know? So a dog, a very loyal animal for a human being, was the best friend for us, not a cat. But yet Muhammad, he want to kill dogs, and he hated dogs. And what kind of God he want to kill dogs? I mean, why? They are very, I mean, a dog is a stupid animal. I mean, all those. Uh, but, but why they say you cannot kill ants? And why why, why dogs okay and ants not? Uh, no, uh, he did not say really. Uh, he, he said he, wanna, he wanted to kill ants by burning them. Then he remembered that he should not burn except by uh, Allah. Allah is the only one who burned. But he did not say don't kill ants. You know, he was, he was actually going to burn the ants. Yeah, because my grandmother you know, always told listen, us listen. to okay, not let us, let us, uh, kill us, the ants. Okay, let us say that uh, uh, Muhammad, he liked cats. What about killing a woman and he cut her to pieces when she's alive? He's nice with the cat, but he want to kill a human? Yeah, that's A true. woman, her name is Umm Qurfa. You can search, you know, you don't speak Arabic, so I cannot find you. Maybe you can find a new language. Uh, Umm Qurfa, she is over the age of 80. Muhammad, he tied her legs by two camels and he ordered the camels to rip her to pieces when she's alive. So Muhammad is nice with the cats, but he rib a woman two parts when she's alive and she is over the age of eighty. But why? Why was she? Why? Why did he do that? What the reason? She made poetry. She rejected him. She is against him. But this is not an excuse. Even if, if, even if you want to kill her, why you want to kill her in such a way? You tie her legs and you split her to pieces when she's alive. Jesus, that's. Uh... Yeah, you said just say you said you just uh, said Jesus. So why you don't accept Jesus? I just heard you saying Jesus. You are copying the wisdom what they say. What about you say Jesus? Accept Jesus, my friend. This is cult. This is a stupid cult. There is no way this is godly thing. God, He created all those animals created for our benefit. And but are uh, uh, just another question? But are 
what does Christ think about Muslims? Are they going to hell or anyone who don't accept Christ, including the Jews, they will go to hell. Okay. The Jews and... who, who came after Jesus, if they don't accept Jesus, they will go to hell. No exception. And Christians too, who are a Christian by name, they will go to hell too. Okay, and the hell is uh, described there, or just uh, there's not? many verses in the Bible about hell. But you know, don't worry about hell. Worry about your you following the true. Uh, you see, don't believe in God because you're afraid of from hell. I don't believe yeah. in Jesus because I'm afraid of a punishment. I believe in him because he is the right to follow, not because somebody want to punish me. Because if your motivation is because you are scared of punishment, maybe that is a lie. Just as trying that, to scare you. about so Islam enjoy. because there's you know a lot of punishment, so that makes people just scared, you know. Yeah. Well, Muhammad, he wanted, Muhammad, he used terror in every mean, every way. The, you know, the man he had to terrify the women, the, the wife, the daughter, the the the, the prophet terrified the man, and Allah terrify everybody. So it's a chain of terror, uh, a chain of terror. Shaitan, he play with the anus of the Muslim. He sleep in his nose. He piss in his ears. It's a terror. You know, he tried to scare you because if you don't without me, Shaitan would do those things to you just to scare the hell of you. So what do you yeah. think, uh, lady? Uh, what I about this uh, Dajjal, then, the Antichrist? Well, the Dajjal is not really an Antichrist. The Dajjal is the false messiah. And this yes. is the proof that the messiah is the true one to follow because why Shaitan, he chose to be a false messiah, not false Muhammad. Huh? Yeah, the, why is that? I don't know. Yeah, because he is trying to please God. Shaitan, he want to be God in earth. He don't want to be just uh, Satan. So Shaitan, he chose, according to Muhammad, supposedly. But that false messiah uh, pretends to be God. Yeah, right. Yeah, true. This is why if 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 uh, if he is a pretending to be God, so why he chose to be the messiah? What about choosing to be God? <laughs> You know, yeah, the, the because reset, simply, right. because simply, the Messiah is God. As simple as that. Actually, Muhammad, he said that uh, uh, the Messiah, the real Messiah, or Allah, supposedly, not one eye. Correct. Yes. Okay. Why Muhammad? He says that you, you should know that your Lord is not one eyed. Why he he think that Allah look like the Messiah? Why does he think that? Well, let me show you. I don't know if you, you said you can't see the, uh, the screen, but I will give you the link so you can read it later. I yeah, I think I've I've seen that before on your videos about. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, Muhammad described how the false Messiah look like, and then what he say. Look carefully. You can open the link there. The Prophet said, I have told you so much about the Dajjal. But I am afraid that you may not understand that the Dajjal is a short, hinted, woolly haired, one eyed in eye sightless, and neither protruding nor deep seated. If you are confused about him, know that your God is not one eyed. <laughs> So that means he has everything, but he has more than one eye. That's mean Allah is a short man. Yeah, he look exactly like the false Messiah, except the one eye. So how but, has, but does Muhammad claims that he's seen God? It doesn't matter. Obviously, he claim here that this is how it is. No, Muhammad, he did not say he saw Allah, but actually, there's a hadith says he saw. Uh, uh, Allah, He created, uh, or Allah Himself simply he created it from the pee of the horse. Pee of the horse. Yeah. We can talk about it later. Yeah. Of Allah course. Himself is created from the piss of the horse. And that's in a hadith. Yeah, this is a hadith. How did? How do? Jesus, they keep saying Jesus. Why you don't accept Christianity? I, I, I always say Jesus, just always. I have no nothing. Uh, I always say that. I don't know why, but 
Okay, I think. <laughs> yeah. But why does it still, because maybe I've always believed this. I mean, I'm 26 now. Mm. And it's like, I don't know if a lot of Muslims also do ha uh, have this. Because something just inside of you just is, yeah, you just, you're not sure. You're still afraid that something will happen. I can't explain. I, I don't know if uh, someone else had this before, but. Uh, you just need more time because I've seen that it, it takes a lot, a lot of time to just, you know, to to leave but, Islam. But I mean, one thing is enough to leave Islam. All of the, all those things we showed you is a stupid. Quran is full of errors and mistakes. As long as you are watching my videos, I mean, how many videos you saw of mine? Oh, I think uh, almost all of the videos. So until now, you are not convinced that Islam is false. Yes, of course, but something just tells me that maybe because I've always believed, you know, it's hard. So, so uh, what hard? I mean, it's hard to be smart or hard to be stupid. <laughs> See? No, if, no. If, it's if not Islam bad, is a stupid, but... if Islam is a stupid, and you are saying it's hard to leave, to leave being a stupid, that's not right. Yeah, so because you... you've always believed something for a lot of years, you know, no, and no, when you so, read, that's so not what? true. So, so what? You, as long you get a confirmation. That what you believe in was wrong, so you should not stay in the wrong. Yes, that's true. So, why you don't say I am out of Islam? I'm I'm not doing anything about it anyway. So. Yeah, but why you don't say? Right I'm, now? I'm just Muslim by name. Why are you are afraid to say I am out of Islam? I don't know. There's something inside of me. Just okay. I don't know what it is. All right, my friend. I'm going. I'm not going to force you. You know. No, to... it's not. It's not forcing. I mean, I'm. I'm calling you. I'm asking questions. It's not that I'm a good Muslim or something like that. I, I'm seriously not doing friend, anything you are about a, it. You are a good Muslim. Let me tell you why. A, a bad Muslim for me is the one who believe in killing people, uh, raping, kidnapping, etc. But he is a bad for me. But according to Muhammad, this is a good Muslim. So you are not killing anyone, you are not harming anyone. So for me, you are a good Muslim. But in fact, according to Muhammad, you are a bad Muslim. The bad Christian is who? Somebody, his name is a Christian, but he is not really Christian. The bad Muslim is who? The one whose name is a Muslim, but he don't practice Islam. Same. So the one who practiced Christianity, he followed the step of Jesus. He forgave, he loved, etc. The one who followed Muhammad, he practiced the steps of Muhammad. He killed, he kidnapped, he raped. So you are not doing any of those. So according to Muhammad, you are a bad Muslim. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so why don't say I am out of this gar garbage? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm out of this silly garbage. Wonderful, here we go. That, finally, <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for you. Yeah, you need to be brave. I mean, you're holding yourself. You're holding yourself. And inside you, I can tell. You are convinced that this is a garbage religion. So what are you waiting for? So you are a Moroccan. You decide, you know, you are just following the tradition because, okay, I grew up in a society and I believe in this for a long time. But you can tell already that this is false. So yes, it's a garbage. I'm out of it. I'm happy for you. I'm not yeah, going to ask you. It's kind of hard with families. And, you know, you, so what? you don't I mean, know I'm not, I'm not going to stop. Uh, it keeps following something stupid just because my family, they follow some the same stupid thing. That will make us all of us stupid. I want to be smart. You know, if the whole world follows something stupid, am I going to follow the stupid world? No, I will not. Who care about how many? Who? You know, people they can do whatever they want. There's many people they smoke. Am I going to smoke too? I'm not going well, to smoke because oh. I know it's 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 harmful. So there's people take drugs. People they do things. So if people do things, does not mean it is right. The world is full of crazy, stupid people. So we will not do stupid things just because somebody is doing it. We have to use our brain and we have to think carefully. Otherwise, we will be victims of stupidity. That is true. You know, since I was a kid, I never smoked a cigarette. My friends, you know, teenage, they say, take a cigarette, try it, try it. I say, no. Just try it, man. Be a man. Even to try to, to like make you insult you, like if you because in their mind, like if you don't smoke, you are not a man yet. Hmm? I said I am a man without smoking. This is stupid. 
even when I was a kid, they could not fool, fool me. So we have to use our brain for what is right and what's wrong. Otherwise, there's many stupid things around us in this earth. True. And I have, I have another question. Maybe it's not. It's about people who've almost died and they see like a tunnel of light. Is that is so is a is that something in Christianity also or not? I or are these speak, people just lying? You see, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I cannot tell you really how true for this because I have to go there and tell you. Then anything else? Yes, it's course, just somebody yeah. told. So I don't go by those things. It can be true. It can be false. I don't, you know. This is, but I'm not believing in God because somebody he saw whatever. What if somebody he was almost going to die and he saw an underwear? I would, what is, yeah, it's what, called belief. No, that's this is, true. No, this is this is not you know this is not the reason to believe in anything. This is not the reason to believe. Don't go by those things. People they fabricate, people they lie, and they, some people they might be truthful. But I'm not going to believe in God or not to believe because somebody saw something. Yeah, but they send a message for us, right? No, no, no. You see, this is not really necessarily to be true. It might be an illusion. It might be delusion. It might be. It might be the guy is. Uh, and suffering from pain, it might be true. So we cannot we cannot judge something we cannot we did not see, we did not examine ourselves. So people they can say for us, like okay, yesterday I saw somebody coming to me and uh, he was holding iPad and he told me I am Muhammad. I saw uh, uh, somebody in the internet. He's saying he saw the prophet yesterday and he is holding iPad. Okay, I said to myself, well at least the prophet he is buying American product, you know. He did not buy something Chinese, so that's a good sign. But I mean, it's silly, and the Muslim believe in that. So people they see, and people they can say, but we don't believe in God because those stuff. If you if you base your belief in somebody say something, that's a very weak belief. What if he's a liar? So you should base your belief in your experience. This is why in Christianity, Christ he offer you a personal experience with him personal relationship with him not he say she say it is you and him so yeah, but I how can really... i talk then how can i there are a lot of muslims they see jesus in their dreams I, i'm trying to do that also i'm not but... saying it's not i'm not saying this is false at the okay, same time yeah. i can't say it's true because as i said this is personal experience so you should find your own personal experience the lord he says knock at my door and i will open for you so, yeah, but how do you knock? Do you just do you, do you just talk, or you, you, how do you, you do that? Read the Bible. I advise you to read the Bible. All right, read it in a spiritual way, not just like if you are reading a story. Try to to live the story, and this, this is what I do actually. Uh, when I want to understand something, I read it, or you can play an audio for the Bible, and close your eyes, and imagine yourself there, like the Messiah is talking. Imagine the story. Imagine what happened. Imagine uh, 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 like uh, the background, like you know when you watch a movie. What the movie is? The movie there's people wearing clothes, people saying things, people moving. There's a there's even music background, correct? Yeah. So you can you can change what is in text into a real movie in front of you. By God, He gave you a gift which is called imaginary. So you can imagine what it was happening at that time to be happy in front of you. Try to live the story, try to live the wisdom, and try to open your heart when you read it, not just to read a plain text. So do that, and let us see if the Lord, he will invite you. I believe that the Lord, he will give you an invite. And right now, I am inviting you actually to accept the Messiah. But this is, as I said, this is a personal uh, invitation. It's not sent from me. It's sent through the Lord, using me to tell you that he loves you and he wants you to believe in him so you can be saved. I sure want to be saved. You want to be saved and not only that, that because you see when you gain when you gain the love of the Lord you will not be left alone. You see all the fight I have I have millions of people want to kill me. Threaten me. I never felt worry. I don't care. I don't even really like for somebody they say to me why you don't show your face? Uh, because this is make me comfortable. I can go right now anywhere vacation. And nobody knows why. I'm. This is the whole point. Otherwise, I don't care. I am not worried about anything. The Lord, the Lord, when it's time, I will go. When it's time, I will stay. And I'm not worried about my future. What I'm worried about is not to be decent 
and not to be what I am, you know, the purpose I exist for. To be just a person who eat and drink and sleep, you know. There's many people, they come to this earth, nobody will remember them, not even their families. And the most important for me to be remembered by my Lord, not by the man. And this is why I'm saying to you, if you want to be remembered by him, because time will come, and Jesus said that from their fruits, you shall know them, not from their names. So the Messiah, he will know you from your fruits. Your name is Fatima, Khadija, doesn't matter for him. You have a Muslim name, doesn't matter. He will judge you by your fruits. And your fruits start with your belief. To believe in the Messiah and to accept him. That's true. And if you feel anything in your heart that the Messiah is really close to your heart, then accept the Messiah, accept him as your savior. Because you see, it, the, 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 the difference between Islam and uh, Christianity, the Messiah, he always, he is with us. He said, every two of you mention my name, I will be between them. I will be the third. So right now the Messiah is with us. Not only, listen, he is with us. So it's a personal relationship. It's not a time you wake up in the morning to pray. Our God is not a government department. He opened from five, from nine to, to five. That is stupid. God is always with us, and God is always listening, and he knew what you want even before you say it. So you, you know, when you receive the Messiah, you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the guidance of God, you receive his uh, uh, comfort, and this is the most important. Look at the Muslims. Go on Islamic countries, angry, the violence, the conspiracy. Everybody think that everybody want to kill everybody. The second you became a Christian, you feel so comfortable. You are not concerning. You are not angry. I can be angry from normal stuff, but I'm not angry to hate and kill. You see a person who was peaceful all his life. The second he go to the mosque, suddenly he want to do jihad. Even his parents are not allowed to take them. Chapter 9, verse number 23. It says, take not your father and your brothers as a friends. So with the Christ, you are a new person. You are a new creation. Without Christ, you are just a creature who can follow anything. That's true. But I also hear uh, Muslims like, yeah, like family. Yeah, the Bible has been changed and... Nobody goes to church anymore, and the mosques are just filling, you know. They're just all saying that. But... Well, first of all, if you go to the church, I live in America, uh, if you have a house close to the church, your price, the house price is low because the churches, they are over flooded to the point they are making a service in the, in the stadium because churches don't fit no more. So what they are talking about. Secondly, maybe in some places in Europe, this is why it's doomed. Those countries that we don't have, uh, where in Holland, where they have a prostitution in the in the in the display. This is not a Christian country. This is doomed. This is why it's doomed. So, Christianity is something, and what people do is something else. Secondly, well, uh, Muslim they say our mosque is full. Where? 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 Where the mosque are full? If if the Muslims are uh, the mosque are full then we should not have people like you are not in the mosque we should not we should have mosque always full but the fact muslims they go only to show off as an example in the middle east number one reason for people to go to the mosque you will see the most door is so busy have you ever been in, in morocco yes okay number one reason for to go to the mosque it was to go to pee not to pray it is the only bathroom open for public. There's a mosque in every corner. So people want to pee, they go to the mosque. But nobody's going to pray. You, you look at the inside, you see everybody going to the bathroom. Yeah, and they also steal shoes there. So yeah, and, yeah, forget about stealing shoes. This is a business. But uh, 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 number one reason to go to the mosque is a bathroom. There's no public bathroom. You know, I, like when I was, I was a kid in the Middle East, this, what is this building? Why people keep coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out? I mean, it's very busy. So I went in to see what's happening, and I followed them, and then I, I ended the bathroom. The mosque is empty. There's nobody in the mosque. Everybody is going to the bathroom. 
But aren't just they going to do the washing or no? Just, they're, just, they're, they're to, to, to piss. You know, there's some they want to go and pray. Yes, but the majority of people in the you know, especially in busy area, it's to go to the bathroom. So, and since when you know, if people go to pray, that's mean they are uh, religious. Most of Muslims they do that because they have to. Otherwise, they will be the neighbor will look at them. He did not go to pray. Oh, he did not open his store to pray. He's a pagan. Allahu Akbar, he is an atheist, you know. So they do it based on fear. Even the Quran says, uh, Muhammad, he told, them, told the Arab, don't say, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. Don't say what? Don't say we believe, say we are Muslim, we surrender. So why why Muhammad saying don't say that? Because simply, you do not need to be a believer to be a Muslim. True. This is the Quran, chapter forty nine, verse number fourteen. The Arab they say we believe. Allah say to them supposedly the one is talking to Allah. You do not believe, but say we are Muslims, not submit. This is false translation. Okay, so what kind of God he says? Don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. Yeah, but doesn't God say somewhere else if you don't believe in me, then uh, yeah, if you don't you're say shahada, yeah, yeah, say shahada, here we go. Here he's saying, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. So, all what he wants from you to say, I believe, but not necessarily to believe. You see, here he says to them, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. Those who speak Arabic, they knew what I'm talking about. There is no way Jesus, he will accept somebody by saying to him, don't say, don't say, don't, don't say I believe, say I'm Christian. That would be stupid. Jesus says the opposite. And even the verse says, for faith never enter your heart. Faith never enter your heart. So how how you are saying to them say I'm a Muslim how somebody faith never enter his heart and you say to him say I'm a Muslim that's madness but because Islam is religion based on hypocrisy it's not important to be a believer what is important to say I'm a Muslim faith faith never enter your heart True. And who is the one talking here? This is Allah Himself saying to the Muslims, "Don't say we believe. Say, say, we surrender to Islam." So they surrender. This is what happened. He forced them by sword. They surrender. Aslamna. قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا. The Arab they say we believe. Say, which means Muhammad, tell them, don't say we believe. Say we became Muslims. For Islam never, faith never entered our faith. So how they became Muslims in Islam, they never entered their faith, their heart. <laughs> and how you say to them, say we are Muslims, and yet they have no faith in their heart. Yeah, that's uh, ridiculous. So that's, uh... all the story is, he want them to convert to Islam, say Shahada, you believe or not, who care? Just say I am a I am I am a Muslim, and that's it. He knew that nobody believed in him. He forced them by the sword. They surrender. That is true. So, what do you think? Do you think uh, the Messiah is the way to follow? I think uh, the God of the Christians is much nicer than Allah, right? It's not about nicer. It's about, you know, uh, it's not yeah, about I nicer. Know, you know what? It's um, You feel more love, loved. Hmm. And you don't have to be scared. And like the Messiah in, in himself, love. he loves you. His message is about love, about forgiveness. God talks more about punishment. They have to obey and punishment and obey punishment. Islam is based on terrorism. About forcing you to do things. They talk more about punishment. Christianity. Christ is about love me, for I love you. 
you see even now you don't believe in him yet right still he loves you and this is why yeah. he wants you to be saved and this is why you know I would be happy really to hear from you that today that you want to accept the Messiah as a savior yeah I want to be loved and I want to be saved so I accept the Messiah and he will you know he loves you already but he now if you if you accept him now you belong to him and the second you belong to him you are in his house this is why we Christians when we ask the Messiah how to pray he says say they pray like this our father out of heaven God for us is a father not just God and there's a huge difference so the father is our provider our protector our loving you know your father he worked all his life to feed you to make you grow that's exactly how God is for us our father so the second you accept the Messiah you accept it to be a child of God where God is your father you are not slave you are not a servant you are a daughter of God and daughter of God here does not mean God have sex with our mother no no I understand yeah this is very high spiritual value but so, when they say uh, Jesus in the, is the son of God they just mean he's from God not literally the son no he right? is no when we say Jesus is son of God simply Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God so God he came to us in an image of a person of a man so he is so when we say the son of God simply God you know like we call God Almighty correct yes and what Almighty mean yeah that he can do everything he can be he, can, he is what he is you can uh, yeah. otherwise he's almighty or not so he is he is what he is this was when when Moses asked him what I will tell my people about you what's your name you see in Christianity God does not have a name really he told him I am who I am he did not give him a name that's why the Jews when they speak about God they don't give a name to God because he is very high to name him you know is like beyond naming there's no names can describe him so God he came to us as a man but yet still he is God and that is Jesus this is why Jesus he is a man yet he can raise people from death he can forgive sin he can make the blind see he can do things nobody can do so being a man did not change the nature that he is God in the same time so he have the nature of a man so we can see him Otherwise, nobody can see God, for He is so glorious. He humbled Himself, so you can see Him as a person. That is true. So, what do you think about accepting the Messiah now? Yes. You accept Him? I accept Him. Amazing! Hallelujah! Thank uh, you. I, uh, you made me so happy, really. I'm really tired from speaking for long with many people. But today you you made you made my day come to be happy day. So I want to say thank you and may the Lord bless your heart and guide you and stay with you. And I ask all the Christians here. I do not know your, your real name, but I ask to all the Christians who they are listening, please pray to this lady from Morocco, who accepted the Messiah as her personal savior. And trust me, you will never regret what you just did, and you will see your life will change, totally will change. Yeah, my heart, my heart is beating right now. So I'm sure, and actually, I can't tell it from your voice. Uh, but don't be, you know, this is a good thing. And even, you know, like uh, uh, you will feel, you will feel a change in your life right away. You will feel it. You will see that you are a new person. Hate will 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 run away from your heart. Anger will run away from your heart. You are a new person. Even the Bible says that we have to be reborn again with Jesus in order to be the children of God. So today you are reborn again. You are a new person. You are not just a person as before you call me. You are totally a new person. And the Lord will be with you, my friend. And let me say my sister, because now you are my sister in Christ. So I'm really happy for you. And I will be happy anytime you have a questions about uh, Christianity. I will be happy to help you. Uh, I want you to, uh, uh, you have your phone, right? I mean, I don't know if you have a computer. You can download the Bible from the internet. And yeah, I've done it. I have uh, have an app with Bible. All right. Uh, so start, read it. start reading from the book of John. All right. From John? Okay. Book of John. Yes. And read all the, uh, whatever you wish. I mean, uh, and uh, this is something sometimes I do. 
I go and I don't decide really what to go. I just put the Bible in front of me and I open it. And whatever it is, that's this is the message of the Lord for me for today. So you can do that for, for from time to time, but I advise you to start reading from the beginning so you can understand how the Messiah, which is the word of God, come to us as a man, and he is with us, and he is the only salvation. And you will see an amazing wisdom, not like a stupid talk in the Quran, you know, somebody trying to make some poetry, and even the language is bad. Uh, it's wisdom, it's amazing, it's so beautiful, it's a spiritual, and it is speaking to you today, even though we are 2,000 years after Jesus. Every word Jesus said 2,000 years ago, it fit with my life today, which is amazing. And that's why we believe that Christ's words is a living word. Living word is not about preserving the word only in a book. It's about that this word live with us. Not only a word said 2,000 years doesn't match for today. Go and read anything Jesus said, and you will find it match with your life today. Same time when the Muslim, they say to you that the Bible is corrupt. That is additional proof to leave Islam because if the Muslim, they say that the one who sent the Injil is Allah, correct? Yes. Okay. So how Allah, he sent the book and he didn't want to protect it. That yeah, it's is, like the Muslims will say that it's like this. Uh, God sent the Torah. Yes. Then he made a mistake. Then he sent the Bible. Ah, then he, na he made another mistake. And then he sent the Quran. Well, why you want to follow? Like last time. Why you want to follow God who uh, keeps making mistakes? Yeah, that's that's something I just I think okay if God is you know good and all knowing and the, why why he makes mistakes like that. Let me show you how stupid Muhammad is. Chapter yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah I know, I know. But I will it. give you an example of, about stupidity. One of the things I hate is stupidity. Chapter three, verse number twenty-eight, sixty-five. Uh, Muhammad is uh, is debating with the Christians. So imagine now Muhammad calling Christian prince and he want to get him busted. So look what Muhammad he says to Christian prince. All oh, people of the scriptures, Jews and Christians, why you dispute about Ibrahim, which means Abraham, while the Torah and the gospel were not revealed till after him? Have you no sense? Which means, are you stupid? Yes. But do you see how stupid this is? Because if the one who came after Ibrahim, he cannot debate about Ibrahim, that's when Muhammad cannot debate about Moses. And Muhammad cannot debate about Jesus because he came at the end. That's true. And here yeah. you see that the one who made the Quran cannot be God, for he is officially a stupid idiot. How you say to me that how you can debate about Abraham and you came after Abraham as if he is the one who was there before them? This is, will be a valid argument if he was before the Jews, before the Christians. But you came long after all of them. But it took like 20 years for them to make it all good. It doesn't Just, matter how, you know, I mean, I mean look yeah. how stupid. We assume that this is supposed to Allah is talking, not Muhammad. But look how stupid this statement is. So look, like imagine I go to a restaurant and I say, okay, this meal is for me. They say, no, we are here before you. Huh? And then I say to them, well, the one who come at the end, he cannot ask for the meal. You eat it. You are the one who came at the end. <laughs> yes. You are the last one in the line. So here you see the stupidity of the Quran and the author of the Quran. So how this is, can be from God? Same time when the Muslim they say that the Bible is corrupt. The Quran says the opposite. The Quran yeah, it's says always like the yeah. The and uh, they, I've read also they say that Muhammad is in the Bible like uh, the name of uh, Ahmed or something like that. I just, well, this, just is, this is again a natural proof that Islam is false. Because if Muhammad is in the Bible, why Allah don't protect the Bible then? I mean, what the point then? If Allah put Muhammad's name in the Bible or a prophecy about him, and how come the Christian did not take those prophecy? As long as they don't like Muhammad. <laughs> as long as they corrupt the book anyway. And look here, the Quran in front of us, chapter 2, verse number 89 says. That I can go to your YouTube channel even if I, um, yeah, it can. Yes, I can open it right now. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yes. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you longer. I'm really happy for you for accepting the Messiah, my friend and my sister. I do not know your name. I do not. I don't want to know your name. Keep it private, please, for yourself, for your safety. But today, you are a new person. And I assure you, before I sleep today, I will have a special prayer just for you, from my heart, as a sister in Christ. 
so the Lord he might take your in your hand and be with you and open your heart to know him better and better and I hope that time will come and you yourself you will be a person a woman who is a child of God who will bring more Muslims to Christ because it is a blessing for us not only to accept the Messiah but to bring people to him that will make him more happy from you that is your reward really that you bring your family bring your friends bring your neighbors to know Christ and that will make something beautiful out of you you came to this earth not just to eat and sleep not even just to accept Jesus I came to this earth so I can serve and I can be a person who can be helpful so happiness will be in the in the in the in the in the kingdom of God today for you accepting the Messiah you are from Morocco and you have a message for all the Moroccan people like you to accept the Messiah and come to him and actually I noticed that a lot of Moroccan accepting the Messiah it's amazing how big the number is so you today is just a new soul from Morocco who follow the Lord and we will pray all of us for you do you want to say anything to the Christians in the chat before you leave I want to say thank you for all your support and that I finally finally decided what I want to do with this and I think I've made the right decision I mean to that you did trust me you did thank you my thank you my dear sister for calling and thank you very to call much me again thank you. anytime you want all right take care take care bye bye, bye. We are happy for our sister from Morocco for she accepted Christ you see like you know I get a headache and I get tired really from talking for long etc but it's always it's paid off and uh, 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 and here we say uh, like you know all the tiring goes when you see someone uh, being saved the, our our purpose is you know we want just people to know <laughs> Yes. Hello. Yes. So, so uh, brother, it will be quick, man. It will be quick. Yeah, listen. Can I say time, something? Each, each time, yes. each time, some someone leaves Islam, you get upset. Are you upset now? No. First of all, I don't think she was a Muslim uh, beforehand mm -hmm. because I know where um, she's also from Holland. I heard from her accent when she just jumped in. Yeah, she, she was said, just uh, she... laughing and fakely laughing. She was just ah. mocking Islam from the very start. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the guy two days ago who is from Somalia? You said to him, "You are not Somalian," and he spoke to you in Somalian, but you could not answer him. Which I, I proved to him. I, I proved to him no, that no, he no. was he, fake you Muslim. No, you hang up. You he hang didn't know the five pillars no, of Islam. No, you hang up. You hang up. And this one did know nothing. Listen, 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 listen. listen. Are, you, are you saying your prophet is a liar? Of are, course, he wasn't a liar. No, you are. You, you are just saying your prophet is a liar. Because your he prophet, he said. Because your prophet said Muslims will leave Islam. That woman was a liar. She wasn't a Muslim. You know, was was like you, a Somali guy two days? No, he was are, a Muslim are, also. No, listen, you are you are being rude. You are being angry now because Islam is being right. exposed and people leave Islam. Each time a Muslim he leaves Islam, you call me. You say to me he's not a Muslim. This is what you do. Because they aren't. She was just mocking Islam when she jumped what, in. Okay, what? Right away, she was Islam. Mocking. You cannot. Okay, can you can you refute what she said? Can you refute what I said to her? Give me one thing she said. Let the last one here we go. That's one in front of our screen. It says Muhammad. He says, "How you dispute about Abraham and you know you came after Abraham? How stupid that is! How you say that if you are the last one, the one who came after Abraham, he cannot dispute about Abraham. But Muhammad came at the end. Yeah, but I told you, you know, the first time we ever spoke, I told you that we were before Abraham. What? And Allah asked us if we want to be angels or humans. Allah, He asked you if, if you want to be angel or human. What is that in the Quran? Can you show me? Guys, Allah, He asked the Muslims before Abraham, do you like to be human or angels? You were, <coughs> Abdul, where do you go? <coughs> where do you, <coughs> where do you go? <coughs> He's not answering now. He's running, running, running away. <laughs> Allah, he asked us to be we want to be angels or a human. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> what a comedy show. Unbelievable. I look, I look, guys. 
a second ago he was shouting and talking and now he's saying I cannot talk now it is 2 a.m. here now you remember it's 2 a.m. a second ago you were shouting saying she's the Muslim she is a liar shame on you coward I understand you get upset and this is what this guy do each time a Muslim he leave Islam he call me he says he's not a Muslim <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> hmm. And you will leave Islam too. Just wait. It's just a matter of time. Already actually you're out of Islam. I can't tell. Because each time I show you something, you run away, you bite your tail, you put it between your legs, and you run away. And then you say to me, I have to look at it. And then you call in the second day. You never look at anything, you never answer anything. Anyway, go. I gave you a simple thing. It's in the front of us on the screen. What kind of a stupid God is God? Who says the one who come after he cannot debate the one come before? That's mean you Muslim cannot debate us. That's mean we Christian cannot debate the Jews. And you Muslim cannot debate the Christians and the Jews. How dummy this God is. And yes, the Satan is angry for you saw a Muslim lady, a decent woman, leaving this stupid cult. Who believe that sperm coming from the ribs of the women? 